Good morning. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. I'm Matt Westerholt, Managing Editor of the Register, and I'm joined today once again by reporter Courtney Estolfi. Hot off news yesterday of the indictment of Sandusky County Sheriff Kyle Overmeyer. So you had a long day yesterday. Yesterday was uh, quite an ordeal, yes. But at the end of it, we saw results. We saw some results. So uh, Special Prosecutor Carol Hamilton O'Brien arrived at the Sandusky County Courthouse, we believe, before 9 a.m. Well, we were told that proceedings began right about 9 a.m. Um, witnesses were brought in and they started testifying yesterday morning. And it went all day. And you, we really didn't know what the outcome was going to be until... Uh, you actually talked with Carol O'Brien, Carol Hamilton O'Brien, at about 9 o'clock in the evening. Yeah, after 12 hours, Ms. O'Brien came out the courthouse doors, spoke to me and a couple other folks, and, and said Sheriff Overmeyer had been indicted on 43 counts, 38 felonies. 38 felonies. So uh, Sheriff Kyle Overmeyer, he's been sheriff since 2008, I believe. Uh, is that right, Jason? That's what we figured out this morning. Yep. Uh, 12 counts of tampering with records, felonies, 12 counts of deception to obtain dangerous drugs, felonies, 3 counts of deception to obtain a dangerous drug, felonies, 6 counts of theft in office, 4 counts of theft, 1 count of theft, 5 counts of filing false financial disclosure reports. So that's a, that's a mighty indictment. 43 charges, 38 of them felonies. Yeah, and, and we did talk to Prosecutor O'Brien afterward. We asked her what kind of offenses these, these charges were linked to. And it looks like Overmeyer allegedly, this is all allegedly, um, he deceived doctors and pharmacists to get a bunch of prescriptions for opiates, for painkillers. He tampered with records at the sheriff's office. He allegedly stole or misused funds from the sheriff's office. Everything seems to be tied around this opiate problem. And Allegedly. Sheriff Kyle Overmeyer was arrested uh, yesterday evening, uh, late yesterday or it early was, this morning. Well, it was just before midnight. Um, he was booked into the Erie County Jail on a holder from Sandusky County. You know, I think there may have been some concerns there. He, since he's still sheriff, his own deputies would have essentially had to have been holding him if he was taken to Sandusky County. And the court order from the visiting judge, I think her name is Cosgrove. Yes, Patricia. Patricia Cosgrove was that he was to be held overnight in jail, I believe. Without bond, and his, his bond will be set in an hour or two at his arraignment here. Right. We're expecting uh, Courtney is going to be heading out to Fremont to the Sandusky County Courthouse in just a little bit. Uh, where Sheriff Overmeyer is expected to be arraigned in Cosgrove's court, I imagine. Correct. Uh, visiting Judge Patricia Cosgrove, uh, and and his bond will be set. But he spent the night in uh, in jail. In jail, and you know that was part of this story because we we have grown so used to uh, grand juries that are 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 not very functional. I mean, we've had four grand juries in the last four years that. Um, where it was questionable whether there was ever any intention to seek indictments. Um, Ms. O'Brien, I believe, in my opinion, definitely went in there yesterday seeking an indictment. She, she had to have presented a slew of evidence. There were officers from a bunch of different local police departments that were there testifying. There were BCI agents swarming around the courthouse. It was, it was an intense effort yesterday, I believe, on her part. And 12 hours after she started presenting evidence against uh, Sheriff Overmeyer, you had an opportunity to interview her. You can see that interview at SanduskyRegister.com. You'll see it at our, our, our news feed, but if you want to search for it, we have a new tagline, right, Jason? Yes. Overmeyer under fire. So if you search those words, you're going to get all the stories that have developed since last night, which are a half a dozen since last night. You were, you were at the courthouse all day. You were there as long as uh, Carol O'Brien was there, Carol Hamilton O'Brien. It was, it was quite a day. What was interesting? Now, was there a lounge that you sat in uh, while, while you were waiting? Was there a, was there a press room? No, we stood outside on the concrete all day. Oh. It was, um, it was fine. We waited and, and we learned the results last night. Was there a whole night. slew of reporters with you? Um, no, by about dinner time, the Fremont newspaper reporter 
arrived, and then a local website, um, a guy who manages that out there, Snusky County Live, he showed up later in the evening. But for most of the day, it was just out there. It was kind of funny. We, we knew where the grand jury room was. We knew where people were kind of coming and going from, but we'd see faces peek out and look down at us. It was... Now, you had an opportunity to talk to some of the people that uh, testified in front of the grand jury. Most of them had no comment. Yeah. Did yeah. all of them have no comment? Yeah. All of them had no comment, <laughs> which is not unwise uh, to not have a comment. Sure. But it did give us a, a good understanding of who was being brought in to testify to this Now, everybody jury. was coming in and out this door, uh, but Detective O'Connell, he slipped around the side. Is well, that we, right? we found out there was another door they could start exiting from. I think maybe when folks started realizing the register was camped outside the other door, they started using a different exit. But yeah, we didn't have a chance to talk to O'Connell. He walked about and around us. So I think he was avoiding us. But uh, you also were tweeting all day, and that feed was picked up on your Twitter feed and also at the Snusky Register, you know, live grand jury coverage. How was that experience for you? It was great. Wish we would have had a little Wi-Fi maybe out there, but... That was what made it difficult. Yeah, but it was... I was happy to be bringing the updates to folks as they came in. It was a good way to get the info so out if there. So you, if you want to see how a newspaper covers a grand jury live, go to SanduskyRegister.com <laughs> and Courtney and Stolfi's Twitter feed, and then the subsequent stories as things developed. Uh, there was one point where you tweeted uh, about an unidentified BCI officer having no comment? Yes. Did you get any feedback from that? I found this particularly amusing. Yeah. I got a tweet back that said, unidentified reporter in red dress standing outside courthouse. Huh. I about cracked up. So there was a little bit of a sense of a humor uh, still there in, in this, despite this stressful day. It had to be stressful for the BCI agents who've worked on this case for a year. Well, and can I just say, this has been a long time coming for yeah. Sandusky County. Yeah. The police chiefs out there have been unable to speak with their partner in law enforcement right. because all the allegations have come forward. Right. It's been a very, I think, stressful year for law enforcement in Erie County or in Sandusky, Sandusky County. County. And we can't say enough about those police chiefs. They pursued this because they thought it was the right thing to do. They reclaimed integrity for law enforcement in Sandusky County as far as I'm concerned. They pushed this forward. It, 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 they're the heroes that, that made this happen. They saw it was wrong. They were forming a drug task force and they were concerned that one of their members, you know, either had a drug problem or there was something wrong. And by this indictment, it appears that there's something wrong. Well, in this age of opiate abuse, this epidemic, this is quite noteworthy, a sheriff, a sheriff getting indicted for, for opiate problems. Now, you know, this is not the first issue in Sandusky County, certainly, um, that we've been reporting on. Our reporting on the Sandusky County Sheriff's Office goes back to 2007, uh, when um, Craig Burdeen was killed inside the jail uh, under questionable circumstances, extremely questionable circumstances. It goes to 2010 when uh, Brian Jones was killed inside his home. Brian Jones was sleeping at the time. He was killed by deputies inside his home. It goes to 2012, when the investigation of Jacob Limberios was, was absolutely botched. It goes to 2012, when the schizophrenic inmate was sexually exploited for hours by jail guards in the jail. Uh, it goes to Heather Bogle, who was killed yes. April 10th of 2015, and there's no answers to that question. I I'm wondering, does you think this indictment will impact those previous cases? There's a lot more work to be done in Sandusky County. Yeah. There's, there's a lot more there than just Sheriff Overmeyer's issues. Um, maybe things will start to shake loose. Yes, and Courtney is going to be at the Sandusky County Courthouse this afternoon in just a little bit to cover the arraignment of Sheriff Kyle Overmeyer. We're also going to be watching, have a watchful eye in, in case there's any protest. There were family members of crime victims that felt their cases were botched by the sheriff's office there yesterday. Yeah. And, and you told one supporter of, Jay, uh, of Justice for Jake, you gave them the news. And what was the reaction? Oh, she started, um, started crying and said that Big Mike, Big Mike Lumberios was there Mike helping Lumberos. us today. Four years they've waited for this. So we're going to be pursuing this story. 
uh, we're going to keep pursuing this story. Mm -hmm. and, and we will look back and we will look forward. So the next step is uh, in just about an hour or so at the Sandusky County Courthouse. So check back at SanduskyRegister.com. Live coverage of the grand jury proceedings and Overmeyer under fire. Courtney, thank you for all your hard work yesterday. Absolutely. It was a tremendous day for uh, you, I think. and, and For I Sandusky think, County. For Sandusky County. So we really appreciate all your work and, and everybody's work at the Sandusky Register to allow this reporting to go forward. And that, that goes from the ownership to our publisher who is upstairs. We can, we can see his office from here, mm -hmm. Tim Parkinson, and everybody else associated with the Sandusky Newspaper Group. Uh, we're, we're proud to be working for this organization, and I'm proud of your work. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it. We'll be back. Uh, we're, we'll give you updates whenever we see it's necessary. Be sure to check at SanduskyRegister.com. Overmeyer Under Fire. Jason, thank you for producing Between the Lines, which is brought to you by, by Serving Our Seniors. Someone to call when you need help. 419-624-1856. Between the Lines Live, Decision 2016 is also brought to you by Matthews Ford Lincoln in Sandusky at US 250 in Perkins Avenue. If you're in the market for a new car, be sure to stop by the new showroom at Matthews Ford Lincoln in Sandusky. Courtney, thank you very much for being on the program today. We're going to check back with you later today, and we'll, we'll come back here live with some more updates. Be sure to check at SanduskyRegister.com for live updates.